Austria, and Prussia. Two powerful German states were at the brink of war. The old Habsburg monarchy found itself in political unrest after the death of Charles VI, ruler of Austria and Holy Roman Emperor. His daughter, Maria Theresa, was the only direct successor of the Habsburg monarchy. Prussia, Bavaria and France found an opportunity to challenge Austria, backed by Great Britain, the Dutch Republic and Hanover. All this tensions culminated into a massive war that swept the continent, giving the opportunity to Frederick, young King of Prussia, to invade Austria, starting the First Silesian War. In the early 18th century, Prussia's ruling House of Hohenzollern held dynastic claims to various duchies within the Habsburg province of Silesia, a populous and prosperous region contiguous with Prussia's co-territory in the Margraviate of Brandenburg. Besides its value as a source of tax revenue, industrial output particularly minerals and military recruits, Silesia held great geostrategic importance to the belligerents. The valley of the Upper Uda formed a natural military conduit between Brandenburg, the Kingdom of Bohemia and the Margraviate of Moravia, and whichever power held the territory could threaten its neighbours. Silesia also lay along the northeastern frontier of the Holy Roman Empire, allowing its controller to limit the influence of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and of the Russian Empire within Germany. Prussia's claims in Silesia were based, in part, on a 1537 inheritance treaty between the Silesian pious Duke Frederick II of Legnica and the Hohenzollern prince-elector Joachim de Hector of Brandenburg, whereby the Silesian duchies of Liegnitz, Wolau and Brieg were to pass to the Hohenzollerns of Brandenburg should the pious dynasty in Silesia become extinct. At the time, the Habsburg King Ferdinand, the first of Bohemia Silesia's feudal overlord, rejected the agreement and pressed the Hohenzollerns to repudiate it. In 1603, Hohenzollern elected Joachim III Frederick of Brandenburg separately inherited the Silesian Duchy of Jagendorf from his cousin, Margrave George Frederick of Brandenburg Ansbach, and installed his second son, Johann Georg, as Duke. In the 1618 Bohemian Revolt and the ensuing Thirty Years' War, Johann Georg joined the Silesian Estates in revolt against the Catholic Holy Roman Emperor Ferdinand II. After the Catholic victory in the 1621 Battle of White Mountain, the emperor confiscated Johann Georg's duchy and refused to return it to his heirs after his death, but the Hohenzollerns of Brandenburg continued to assert themselves as the legitimate rulers of Jagendorf. In 1675, the great elector Frederick William of Brandenburg laid claim to Liegnitz, Wolau and Brieg when the Silesian pious line ended with the death of Duke George William of Liegnitz, but the Habsburg emperor disregarded the Hohenzollern claims and the Lanzas cheated to the Bohemian crown. In 1685, when Austria was engaged in the Great Turkish War, Emperor Leopold I gave Great Elector Frederick William immediate control of the Silesian exclave of Schwebus in return for military support against the Turks and the surrender of the outstanding Hohenzollern claims in Silesia. After the accession of the Great Elector's son and successor, Frederick III of Brandenburg, the Emperor took back control of Schwebus in 1694, claiming the territory had only been personally assigned to the late great elector for life. As a young prince, Frederick III had secretly agreed to this repossession in return for Leopold's payment of some of his debts, but as monarch he repudiated the agreement and reasserted the old Hohenzollern claims to Jagendorf and the Silesian pious heritage. Two generations later, the newly crowned Hohenzollern king Frederick II of Prussia formed designs on Silesia soon after succeeding to the throne in May 1740. Frederick judged that his dynasty's claims were credible, and he had inherited from his father, King Frederick William I, a large and well-trained Prussian army and a healthy royal treasury. Austria was in financial distress, and its army had not been reinforced or reformed after an ignominious performance in the 1737. 1739 Austro-Turkish War. The European strategic situation was favourable for an attack on Austria, with Britain and France occupying each other's attentions in the War of Jenkinsier and Sweden moving toward war with Russia. The electors of Bavaria and Saxony also had claims against Austria and seemed likely to join in the attack. 
Though the Hohenzollern's dynastic claims provided a legalistic casus belli, considerations of realpolitik and geostrategy played the leading role in provoking the war. The 1703 Mutual Pact of Succession provided that if the Habsburgs became extinct of male line, these possessions would go first to Maria Josepha and Maria Amalia, daughters of Emperor Joseph I. Since Salic law excluded women from inheritance, this agreement required approval by the various Habsburgs territories and the imperial diets. Charles succeeded Joseph in 1711 and two years later issued the Pragmatic Sanction. However, it also modified the 1703 agreement by placing the rights of his own children first and after his first child. Maria Theresa was born in 1717. Charles' internal and external policy was dominated by ensuring her succession ahead of his two nieces. Bavaria and Saxony refused to be bound by the decision of the imperial diet, while in 1738 France agreed to back the just claims of Charles Albert of Bavaria, despite previously accepting the pragmatic sanction in 1735. Attempts to offset this involved Austria in the 1733-1735 War of the Polish Succession and the Russo-Turkish War of 1735-1739, and it was weakened by the losses incurred. The situation was compounded by a failure to prepare Maria Theresa for her new role, and many European statesmen were skeptical Austria could survive the contest that would follow Charles' death. With the pragmatic sanction of 1713, Charles had established his eldest daughter, Maria Theresa, as the successor to his hereditary titles. Upon his death, she duly became ruler of Austria, as well as of the Bohemian and Hungarian lands within the Habsburg monarchy. During Emperor Charles' lifetime, the pragmatic sanction had been generally acknowledged by the imperial states, but when he died, it was promptly contested by Prussia, Bavaria and Saxony. An opportunity arose for Prussia to press its claims when Habsburg Holy Roman Emperor Charles VI died in October 1740 without a male heir. Frederick saw in Austria's female succession an opportune moment for the seizure of Silesia, calling it the signal for the complete transformation of the old political system in a 1740 letter to Voltaire. He argued that the pragmatic sanction did not apply to Silesia, which was held by the Habsburgs as a part of the imperial domain rather than as a hereditary possession. Frederick also argued that his father had assented to the sanction in return for assurances of Austrian support for Hohenzollern claims on the Rhenish duchies of Julich and Berg, which had not yet materialized. Meanwhile, Prince Elector Charles Albert of Bavaria and Prince Elector Frederick Augustus II of Saxony had each married one of Maria Theresa's older cousins from a senior branch of the House of Habsburg, and they used these connections to justify claims to Habsburg territory. Frederick Augustus, who ruled Poland-Lithuania in personal union, was especially interested in gaining control of Silesia to connect his two realms into one contiguous territory which would nearly surround Brandenburg. Frederick's concern to prevent this outcome contributed to his haste in moving against Austria when the contested succession provided an opportunity. As Prussia reactivated its Silesian claims and prepared for war against Austria, several other European powers made similar moves. Charles Albert of Bavaria launched a claim to the imperial throne along with the Habsburg territories of Bohemia, Upper Austria and Tyrol, while Frederick Augustus of Saxony laid claim to Moravia and Upper Silesia. The kingdoms of Spain and Naples hoped to seize Habsburg possessions in northern Italy, while France, which viewed the Habsburgs as traditional rivals, sought control of the Austrian Netherlands. The electorates of Cologne and the Palatinate joined these to form an alliance known as the League of Nymphenburg, which aimed at the diminution or destruction of the Habsburg monarchy and its dominant position among the German states. Austria was supported by Great Britain in personal union with the electorate of Hanover and eventually Savoy Sardinia and the Dutch Republic. The Russian Empire under Empress Elizabeth also indirectly took Austria's side in the wider conflict by making war against Sweden, a French ally at the time. Maria Theresa's aims in the conflict were, first, to preserve her hereditary lands and titles, and second, to win or compel support for the election of her husband, Duke Francis Stephen of Lorraine, as Holy Roman Emperor, defending her house's traditional POE eminence within Germany. After Emperor Charles's death on 20 October, 
Frederick quickly resolved to strike first. On 8 November, he ordered the mobilization of the Prussian army, and on 11 December, he issued an ultimatum to Maria Theresa demanding the cession of Silesia. In return, he offered to guarantee all other Habsburg possessions against any attack, pay a large cash indemnity, acknowledge the pragmatic sanction, and give his vote as Elector of Brandenburg in the imperial election to Maria Theresa's husband. Not waiting for a response, he and his troops prepared to advance into Silesia. European warfare in the early modern period was characterized by the widespread adoption of firearms in combination with more traditional bladed weapons. 18th century European armies were built around units of massed infantry armed with smoothbore, flintlock, muskets and bayonets. Cavalrymen were equipped with sabers and pistols or carbines. Light cavalry were used principally for reconnaissance, screening and tactical communications, while heavy cavalry were used as tactical reserves and deployed for shock attacks. Smoothbore artillery provided fire support and played the leading role in siege warfare. For this reason, the era is also referred to as the Age of Gunpowder Warfare, a concept introduced by Michael Roberts in the 1950s. This entire period is contained within the Age of Sail, which characteristic dominated the era's naval tactics, including the use of gunpowder in naval artillery. Strategic warfare in this period centered around control of key fortifications positioned so as to command the surrounding regions and roads, with lengthy sieges a common feature of armed conflict. To do this, engineers developed a style of fortress known as the Italian style or Trace Italian. These had low, thick, sloping walls that would either absorb or deflect cannon fire. In addition, they were shaped like stars, with bastions protruding at sharp angles. This was to ensure that every bastion could be supported with fire from an adjacent bastion. Leaving no dead ground for an attacker to take cover in, these new fortifications quickly negated the advantages cannon had offered to besiegers. Decisive field battles were relatively rare, though they played a larger part in Frederick's theory of warfare than was typical among his contemporary rivals. The Silesian Wars, like most European wars of the 18th century, were fought as so-called cabinet wars, in which disciplined regular armies were equipped and supplied by the state to conduct warfare on behalf of the sovereign's interests. Occupied enemy territories were regularly taxed and extorted for funds, but large-scale atrocities against civilian populations were rare compared with conflicts in the previous century. Military logistics was the decisive factor in many wars, as armies had grown too large to support themselves on prolonged campaigns by foraging and plunder alone. Military supplies were stored in centralized magazines and distributed by baggage trains that were highly vulnerable to enemy raids. Armies were generally unable to sustain combat operations during winter and normally established winter quarters in the cold season, resuming their campaigns with the return of spring. The Prussian army mobilized quietly along the Uda frontier in early winter and launched its long-awaited attack that would become Frederick's first campaign on December 16, 1740. 